Uh, hi, everybody. In the previous lectures, we explained the meaning of the signal and the system. This lecture, we're going to continue for explaining more information about signals. This table, it shows you the types of signals according to specific parameters. For example, if you look for the first row here, if the parameter it's chosen, if the chosen parameter is time, uh, so the signal can be uh, classified as continuous time signal and discrete time signal. What does it mean, continuous time signal and discrete time signals? Let's just take a look at this one. This signal is continuous time signal and write like that, continuous time signal. Why? Because you can find value for the signal x of t at any instant t. Any instant of time, you can find the value of the signal. On the other hand, in discrete time signal, you see here it's sliced. You can find the value of the signal at this instant or at this sampling instant. And you can find value for the signal at this instant, but between these two instants, there is no information. You don't know what's here in this area. You know only at each sampling instant. How can you do the sampling? It's just like you can um, imagine if you have a switch and you have this uh, signal input, which is X of T, and let's say that you you turn on and turn off the switch every t of s, which we call it sampling period. Then the output will be that signal. It will have values only at each sampling instant, and but between any two instant sampling of sampling you don't have any value of x of t. So let's just get one uh, example to explain how can you do that. I will show you a very simple function or uh, signal. Let's say that you have, that's a, a, the time t, and you have here the origin zero. one, two, and let's say that's the y-axis where we're going to represent the signal and the value is equal to six. And let's just take another color here. And ah, that's a signal and will be zero here. That's a continuous time signal. And it's called X of T. You can call it any name. Why it's continuous? Because at each instant of time, you can find value, the value of the signal itself. We can express the signal as a function of time between zero and two, it's a straight line. And it's very easy to find. So when time is greater than zero, less than two seconds, the equation of this one, the slope is equal, six over two is equal three is negative. So it's equal minus three T plus six. Here you can review it, you find this is the function. So that's equal to minus three T plus six in this period between zero and two. But it will be zero if it's uh, uh, if it's a time less than zero, it's, it, the function will be equal zero, as you see. And if it's greater than two, the function is equal zero. So we'll come write as equal zero elsewhere. That's a continuous time thing. Let's now assume that you are going to sample this function using a sampler with sampling period is equal to 0.5 second. So that will be open and close 
every sampling ts is equal 0.5 second so the input will be x of t and the output will be a sequence of n what's n we are going to explain now what's n n should be an integral it could be a positive or negative or zero could be like minus 10 minus 9 0 1 2 i mean it go to a, any value s integral what is the relationship between n and t and ts we will say that the time t is equal to n ts so any time t can be expressed as n ts n is an integer for example here zero at time equals zero n is equal zero let's just make a, an axis n is equal zero and since you are going to sample it every point five s so now you can write n time point five so you will say t is equal point five n all right that's the time t so when you move every point five that's another sample another point five because this is point five this is one another point five that's two so another point five that will be three another point five that would be equal four and if you can go backward also you can see if you go backward minus point five second assembly you get minus one and minus one and so on minus two so that's how we calculate n so the relationship between t the time and n is assembling time ts good well we want to find the value of the sequence x of n the corresponding now the question is find the corresponding x n what's x n it's a sequence it's a discrete time signal to find the value at each n it's just very easy it's, let's say now x of n what's x of n x of n is equal to x of t but you put t equal n t s so x of n is equal x of t and t substitute n times t s and t s is equal in this case 0.5 that's how you find x of n well let's now say if we n equals zero so x when n equals zero is equal x 0 0.5 times zero will be equal zero and you go there what is the value when x equals zero you can look at the diagram or you can substitute in the equation well put zero here so minus three times zero is equal zero plus six is equal six so x of zero is equal six now go for the second n equal one so what's x one x point five time one is equal point five how you find the value you know we have the equation here it was still between zero and two minus three t plus six let's just write the equation here x of t is equal minus 3t plus 6 if you substitute by 0.5 so you have minus 3 times 0.5 which is a half plus 6 that's equal minus 1.5 plus 6 that would be equal 4.5 so it's equal 4.5 let's take n equal 2 x of 2 that's a sequence by the way x you have equation here x 0.5 n 0.5 n and n is equal to will be equal one 
So it means time equal one. You put t equal one here. If you put t equal one here, minus three times one minus three plus six equal three. Now let's find n is equal three. Here you go, x. Uh, the equation we have 0.5n, 0.5 times 3 will equal 1.5. How you find? Substituting the equation by t equal 1.5. So you have minus 3 times 1.5 plus 6. So minus 3, 1.5 being 3 over 2 plus 6. So be minus 9 over 2 plus 6 minus 4.5 plus 6. That equal 1.5, so it's equal 1.5. Last one, in in equal 4, x equal 2. x, but in equal 4, will be 2. Substitute by 2, minus 3 times 2 by minus 6, plus 6 equals 0. Now we got the value of, uh, from uh, n equals 0 to 4, and it, it, I cover from t equals 0 to t equal 2, and we know from 0 to 2, I have this function, minus 3t plus 6, but the rest will be equal to 0. So any n will be equal to 0 after that. Any n. Well, how can you represent this one? Well, you will have this axis, it's n. And you have the y-axis, that's x of n. That's the sequence. Different than this, that's a continuous time signal. That's a sequence or discrete time signal. Then you start to find when n equals zero, it's equal six. So just make this one six. So just let's shift the color so you understand what we're doing. We'll make it red. So at n equals zero, the value is equal six. So let's just assume this is six. All right. And you can make like all right. Now, when n equal one, that's one. You have n from zero to four, two, three, four. Well, at one is equal four point five. So the three you have to be four point five. Four point five. When two is equal three, that's three. At n equal three, it's equal one point five. Make a circle, and then at four is equal zero. What about the rest? Well, the rest are zero, so you can just put at five is equal zero, at six is equal zero, minus one equal zero. That's equal zero. So this one we call it discrete time signal or sequence. So that's the difference between continuous time signals and discrete time signals. And we're going to have another lecture for how to write MATLAB program for both. Thank you.